Hey, hey, what is up, spiritual hooligan? When you are worried, you're putting yourself into a compromised position. You're not as creative, optimistic, energized. Things aren't flowing. And the worry and the doubt and the concerns about the future all come from a contextual framework that says you are at risk. This is a survival perspective, and today we're going to talk about the enlightened perspectives that free you from that worry so that you can be in a joyous, uplifted state. My name is Matthew Ferry, and I'm bringing you your daily enlightenment. It's your moment to pause, to slow down, and to get connected to enlightened perspectives. I want to help you to quiet your mind and restore your peace. Now, the way we do that is utilizing the framework that I talk about in my book, Quiet Mind, Epic Life, and that framework is called the Rapid Enlightenment Process. And the Rapid Enlightenment Process has four components. One, you got to see the unconscious reflexes of the drunk monkey. That's all that talking in your head. You have to see that it's unconscious, it's a reflex, you can't control it, and it has an underlying motivation, and that's step two. The motivation to speak or have the mind speak in the first place are driven by what are called hidden motives to survive. Number three in the process is what we're talking about today, which is in enlightened perspectives. If you are unable to connect with enlightened perspectives, you'll be mired down in survival perspectives. And while survival perspectives are just as valid as enlightened perspectives, they're also unprovable, untrue, and dogmatic. And they're both the same way. They're both most of the perspectives that we have about life and about our world and about being a person, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a made up story that we have. The question becomes, do you have the personal power, the strength to contextualize things in a way that brings strength and power to you? We're going to talk about that. And then fourth in the process is recontextualization. And that is transforming your language to imply that all is well. So today we're going to take on some enlightened perspectives and actually this is the, I don't know, the, the, the 15th or 16th time in a row in the daily enlightenment that we're taking on enlightened perspectives. I'm just on a terror of taking on each of the components of the rapid enlightenment process. Let's talk about this first one. This is interesting. This tests strong when you do a muscle test, which doesn't mean that it's true, but every person I've ever tested this on Meaning, I made the statement, I pushed down on their arm, and no matter how hard I pushed, they were able to keep their arm strong. This, this particular statement tests strong on everyone. You, the soul, has incarnated on earth as a vacation from being an infinite being. Now, when I first thought of that idea, it was like, what? I did, like, the idea seemed silly to me. But then we started testing it on people's arms and across the board it made people strong, which doesn't mean it's true, but it strengthens you, it empowers you. It doesn't mean that it's true. But when you muscle test, what you're seeing is what strengthens the body and what weakens the body. And let's just be honest, as a best practice, you want to be strengthened. As a best practice, you don't intentionally take poison, for example, which weakens the body and degrades the body, right? That, that's like a best practice. And it turns out that there are thoughts and ideas that do the same thing. They either, essentially, this is metaphorically speaking, poison the body and make it weak, or they empower the body and make it strong. This particular statement strengthens the body. You, the soul, have incarnated on earth as a vacation from being an infinite being. Now, if you are filled with worry and doubt and fear and uncertainty, and you start to connect with the idea that you're an infinite being and that you're on vacation on earth, it begins to shift your framework ever so slightly, very subtly. Not because the statement is true, but because any statement, any thought, any idea that you have about this is a made up BS story. You don't know, I don't know. The soul is an aspect of the background quantum field of energy and information that is self-organizing 
into subatomic particles, which are then self-organizing into greater and greater states of complexity. You and me, for example, are incredibly complex organisms that are made up of all these self-organizing aspects. You didn't get your cells to divide and turn into you. You're not operating the system of your body. It's operating itself. It's a self-organizing system. So you can stop worrying about everything. You, the soul, are on holiday. Just take a deep breath in and enjoy the contrasting and opposing forces that we encounter every day on this vacation. You're on vacation. Number two, negative experiences are currently the most popular vacation for a soul on earth. This is a strengthening idea. It may not always be a strengthening idea. There might be some tip in circumstances where negative experiences are not the most popular, but right now, the most popular experiences for an infinite being who's on vacation here on Earth is a negative experience. And it's only negative, for being honest, it's only negative because of your opinion. From an infinite perspective, it's all just an interesting experience. Take that in. From an infinite perspective, if you locate yourself as the energy and information in the quantum field that is self-organizing into everything that we see, then you are innately the quantum field. The quantum field is omnipresent. So you are innately omnipresent, self-organizing into this individual thing. So consider this idea. It's an interesting experience. This world you're living in, this idea that you're living in, this, this experience you're having is an interesting experience. Now you also could give people the space to enjoy their vacation. It's advisable to stop pestering people to be more positive. That's just something you're interested in. You don't know why you're interested in being more positive. You don't know why you're interested in being more peaceful and joyous and loving and kind. You don't know why. You just came in this way. Stop bugging other people to do the same thing. Number three, you chose your ge geographic location before you incarnated as a human being. This is a strengthening test. So when we make the statement and we push down on your arm, we try to see, does it strengthen or weaken this particular muscle right here. And what we'll find is you say, for example, out loud, I chose the geographic location before I, I chose my geographic location before I incarnated as a human being. And we press down on your arm. It's easy. It just strengthens. There's nothing. You're, you're not degraded in any way by the statement. But if we say, for example, the geographic location that you were born into is random or was random, was a random occurrence or any variation in that way. No matter what you do, your arm is weakened. I don't know why this is. Don't be listening to me like I know why any of these things are happening. I don't know. But what I do know is that it profoundly changed my life and the lives of thousands of my clients by adopting these unprovable dogmatic statements rather than believing or adopting the, the corollary unprovable dogmatic statements, right? I didn't choose. I have no choice. I'm a victim of my circumstances. All of those things weaken the system. And when you're weak, you're suboptimal. When you're suboptimal, you have a suboptimal life. Hello. It's so friggin' logical here. It's so logical. Now you, the soul thought, that it would create an interesting experience to incarnate in a specific location. This test strong, so roll with it. Enjoy it. Play with the contrasting and opposing forces. Number four, numero cuatro. I am learning Spanish right now using the Duolingo app and it's super fun. Numero, numero cuatro. I, I don't think I'm pronouncing it very well, but roll with me here. You chose your parents before you were born. Now remember, these are like new agey kind of thoughts or, or um, Hindu or Buddhist type thoughts. And I was, um, I was raised a Catholic, so you know these things were like foreign to me. But I just decided to put all this stuff to the test. 
to the muscle test, see what happens, right? Uh, I got no other way of assessing it other than my own bullshit perspective. And I will tell you, my perspective is bullshit just like yours. Nobody actually knows. So the question is, does it strengthen you or does it weaken you? And then if you, and then what I did was did experiments. Okay, well, what if I just practice believing the things that strengthen me as a, as a scientist, see what happens. And lo and behold, my life got a lot better. And I'm proposing that you do your own experiment. I'm not proposing that I'm right. That's preposterous. I'm proposing you do your own experiment. You chose your parents before you were born. You, the soul, your current parents, your friends, your enemies, your family members have all incarnated together many, many lifetimes. This tests strong. If we add the word random to any of this stuff, it tests weak. The randomness that, that we talk about tests weak. And if we look at, at chaos theory in general, we see not, you know, I'm not a scientist here, so don't, don't hold me accountable to being um, supremely accurate, okay? That would be a really a, a bad idea. But if we look at chaos theory, what we see is that the, what appears to be chaos, there's actually this, this much broader equation of inputs that can be um, correlated or can be understood if we go really broad and consider that that's what life is, just a very large set of inputs. Your enemies are actually your soul buddies. That test strong. They're chipping in to increase the variety and the contrast for you. That test strong. What if you took these things on? Look, you're infinite. Are you infinite? I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. It's unprovable dogma. I mean, I would love to reassure you like I'm some all-knowing windbag, but I'm not. I'm just a person like you. I'm just doing the best I can to optimize my own experience. And the optimization has been so radical and so incredible and so enjoyable that other people are like, what the F are you doing, Matthew Ferry? And then I'm sharing those things with people and then it's making a difference for them. That's all it is. In fact, if we just look at humanity, that is what evolution is for humanity. It's this sharing of, of ideas and information. We are a collective. We're not individuals. We are one organism that is expressing itself in this infinite variety of ways. And there are parts of the organism which are seeking inner optimization, meaning optimizing for joy and peace and love and kindness and harmony and all of that. And I just happen to be one of those things and I suspect you are too. It seems like people in you, like you and I are predisposed to inner optimization. So here's what I want you to do. Take these perspectives and pretend like they're true. Run an experiment because that's what you're doing with your current set of beliefs, except you don't think it's an experiment. You think it's real. So I, I want you to consciously decide rather than unconsciously be driven. Be a scientist about it and then let me know what happens as you take this stuff on and operate like it's true. Now, leave me a perspective uh, or a comment. I want to know what your perspective is. Like, how is this hitting you? How does this, how does this turn off the worry and the doubt and the fear and, and transform it a bit? Leave me a comment. I want to know. My name is Matthew Ferry, author of Quiet Mind, Epic Life, and it would be very meaningful. If this was a helpful video to you, then like it. Share it with the people who, who are important to you in your life and leave me a comment. You can also subscribe to my channel and you can join us over on Facebook. We have a, a, a group over there called the Spiritual Hooligans. Thank you so much for tuning into this Daily Enlightenment.